It's one week from Labor Day, and then all of a sudden, although summer goes, and you know, enjoy summer, goes all the way into September, but we start thinking about the garden and how to put things uh, to bed for the winter. And there are some things, there's some do's and don'ts about trimming plants and dividing perennials and different things. So if you are going to do a little pruning and trimming, you always want to make sure that you have a really good, you know, get yourself a, uh, a good pruning shear. They make an excellent gift too. If you really want to be cool, you take one of these and then the plants know you mean business when you have that hanging on your belt, trust me. Um, stealing a kitchen knife for dividing, maybe not the best steak knives, but uh, that comes in handy out there so so that you'll be ready and then remember your tools need to be you really should disinfect them because plants carry some diseases so using a little chlorine or just household disinfectant in between times that use them is not a bad idea all right plants in general there's a few special ones the hydrangea right here the white ones are usually paniculata there's a few varieties so these because they're later bloomers these we generally you, you would cut back in late fall or early in the spring and that's fine they bloom on new wood they'll be perfect the one that we tend to mess up is the macrophyllas and the macrophyllas are the ones with either pink or blue flowers so the problem with these are is they if though some of the newer ones will bloom on both old and new wood so if you go pruning them in the winter you're cutting off color for 2019 so the rule of thumb on this is, and we're almost at the end of, we are at the end of august well, it's probably too late because in on a macrophylla, you keep it watered, fertilize it, and trim it up in early August, and then you let it go. So if you have a pink or blue one, you're best really just to leave it or just know that if you do prune it back, you're going to reduce some of the uh, the color that you get. Now, just a quick mention because in our soil, they're going to turn uh, pink because of the pH. If you want them to be blue, using soil acidifier, aluminum sulfate, sulfur, one of those, uh, and using it a few times during the growing season, that'll help keep it blue. People on the East Coast, they use lime to keep them pink because nobody's ever happy. Now, regular pruning like a burning bush, you can actually, and a burning bush actually is on the invasive plant list, but they are everywhere. So you can actually aggressively prune these. If you want to take this all the way down, now you want to enjoy the fall color, but after that, you could cut this thing if it's just overgrown, take it all the way back to a foot if you want, and you'll rejuvenate it and have a new plant. Uh, the, 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 uh, the little uh, thing here on evergreens, don't prune or don't cut back and shear them back because if you shear past the green veneer, it does not rejuvenate. So if you want to chop this thing up and you get past the green, you're going to be in trouble except on a few varieties that will come back. Rose bushes, rose bushes are probably the number one thing that, that everyone wants to cut them back in the fall but really you should cut them back in the spring because you'll end up uh, having to cut them way back after the winter kills them back. So my, my uh, tip here is if it's four or five foot and you want to prune it up a little bit for, so what you do is trim it back to about 36 inches and then in March take it the rest of the way back. Then you don't end up with a really stubby plant with, with dead woods. All right. Then of course there's perennials that you can divide either in the spring or the fall. You can use a ni nice knife to cut them up. So there's all kinds of things to do as we go into the fall season.